When I was a kid, I was really bad at school. I had some reading and learning problems. I was fidgety and disruptive. I had trouble paying attention, and I was really hyperactive. There was only one thing that I was any good at, and that was creating my own comic books. Fortunately, I grew up at a time before they invented ADHD. If I hadn't, perhaps some well-meaning doctor might have prescribed a drug that could have cured me of my creativity. But this was the early 1970s, and the worst label they could give me back then was Problem Child. Ah, the good old days. The comics I made back when I was a kid were very popular with my classmates. Not so popular with my teachers. When I was 11 years old, I created a whole series of comics about a guy called Waterman. Waterman started out as this dude who went fishing on the wrong day. On this particular day, there was a terrible storm, and he got struck by lightning. At that very moment, he also caught a fish, and the fish pulled him into the water, and he got struck by lightning again. And again. Apparently, what happened was all that lightning supercharged his molecules and began to morph them with the water. And before you knew it, the guy turned into water. His whole body was made up of water, and he could do pretty much anything that water could do. He could flatten himself down into a puddle. He could evaporate and turn into a cloud. And he could also make himself rain and go down chimneys where the raindrops would kind of recombine and turn him back into his watery old self. In one adventure, Waterman's evil twin Mazumba robbed a bank by flattening himself down and sliding under the bank's vault. Once inside the vault, he found a bunch of money, and he slid each of the $500 bills carefully under the door. As you can see, most of these comics were drawn in pen or markers, so there was not a whole lot of erasing. When I was a kid, I just wanted to get my ideas out on paper as fast as I could. If I made a mistake, it wasn't really a big deal. I wasn't concerned with drawing things accurately, and I never stopped to look up the spelling of a word or to make sure that my grammar was correct. That kind of thing really wasn't on my radar when I was a kid. A lot of kids ask me where I get my ideas from, and I usually tell them North Carolina. But to be honest, many of my ideas come from the things I loved when I was a kid. Like most boys in the second grade, I thought underwear and toilets were hilarious, so I made up characters based on the things that I liked. For example, Captain Underpants and Diaper Dog were both characters I created when I was a kid. And when it came time to invent an evil villain for Super Diaper Baby 2, I again went back to my childhood, to the adventures of Waterman. Super Diaper Baby 2 was the epic story of an evil genius named Dr. Dilbert Dinkle. Dr. Dinkle has invented a creation which turns things into water. One night, he decides to rob a bank, and he shows off his new invention by zapping it at the bank's brick wall. Suddenly, all the bricks turn to water. Then, he aims his invention at the bank's vault. But when he stops to take some measurements, his cat Petey accidentally zaps him. turning him into a walking, talking puddle of water. But this unfortunate accident doesn't deter Dr. Dinkle one bit. As you can see, he easily slides under the bank vault, finds all the money, and slides each bill carefully under the door. Sound familiar? He also finds out that he can evaporate and when he rains, his drops go down the chimney, just like our old pal Waterman. I began writing this book in the fall of 2010, and I used these notebooks to create my first draft. I wanted to make this first draft the very same way I made my comics when I was a kid, so I used a pen and not a pencil. I did this because pencils have erasers, and I didn't want to be tempted to correct all of my mistakes immediately. Just like when I was a kid, I wanted to get my ideas out on paper as fast as I could. And it didn't matter if I made mistakes. I knew I could always fix it later.
When I did the final artwork, I chose to keep a lot of my mistakes in the book on purpose. I even added some extra spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes too. And I did this for a reason. When I got my first book published about 25 years ago, I spent several years visiting schools and libraries and talking with kids about writing and drawing. And I always used to ask my audiences the same question. How many of you kids like to draw and make up stories? Now, if I asked that question to a group of second and third graders, almost all the kids would raise their hands immediately. I mean, those hands would shoot up because second and third graders love to draw and make up stories. But I noticed that somewhere around the fourth grade, things started to change. Because if I asked that same question to, let's say, a group of fourth and fifth graders, I'd be lucky if maybe 10% of the kids would raise their hands. And believe me, it got way worse as they got older. I always found this really disturbing, so I would ask the older kids why they didn't like to write and draw. And they always told me more or less the same thing. They didn't think they were good at it. Maybe they got a D on an essay, or perhaps somebody made fun of one of their drawings one day. So they started to avoid art. They were so afraid to fail that they stopped writing and they stopped drawing. They just stopped. They didn't do anything, and it really worried me. That's one of the reasons why I created the characters of George and Harold. George and Harold are two fourth graders who aren't very good at school. They can't sit still or pay attention. They're hyperactive and disruptive, and pretty much the only thing they like to do is make comics. And of course, their comics are a lot like mine when I was a kid. They have misspelled words and bad grammar, and their drawings aren't really that much better than stick figures. George and Harold aren't necessarily good at writing and drawing, but that doesn't stop them from making good books. Now, I know there are some grown-ups out there who don't like George and Harold's books. They seem to think that kids who read these books will suddenly turn into bad spellers. To me, that's kind of like saying that kids who learn a foreign language will suddenly forget how to speak English. I think kids are way smarter than many grown-ups give them credit for. My hope is that through George and Harold's ridiculous examples, that kids will see that writing and drawing can actually be fun, even if they're not super good at it. All along, I really hoped that kids might ease up on their fear of failure and maybe start creating their own original stories just for fun. So far, I think my plan is working because each year I get hundreds of original stories and comic books sent to me by kids. And keep in mind that none of these books were homework assignments. These books were all made for one reason, for fun. And for many of these kids, it might be the very first time they ever realized that writing can be for fun. And who knows, perhaps that very thought could inspire a lifetime of creativity. <laughs>